In this section, we're going to dig into what are in all of these various entries, like the page map level four entry, page directory pointer table entry, etc. Unfortunately, I have to apologize in advance. This is going to be pretty dry thus far. I haven't found any particularly good way to spice it up. The only way out is through, so let's get to it. So we have to start with CR3, actually, because that has a particular structure that will be inside the register. So first of all, if you see anything listed as reserved, you should assume that's zero. M in this bit field up here is indicating the max fizz adder. I'm going to pretend it's 52, even though I told you that on my particular system, it's actually 39. So on my system, this would be 38 and this would be 39, but let's pretend it's 52 as if you had something that had the maximum support. If it was 52, then bits 51 through 12 are the most significant bits of the physical address where the page map level four table can be found. And just ignore the fact that this would look like reserved. You just have to slide it up and then that wouldn't be reserved anymore. So one thing that I have to caution that's oftentimes very confusing for people, certainly was confusing for me when I was first learning an operating systems class, you know, you turn on paging and all of a sudden every single address is running through page tables. And so it's sort of like in some sense before paging is on, you have access to physical addresses. But after paging is on, you don't have direct access to physical addresses ever. The MMU has access, so you can go ahead and stick addresses in here and the MMU will happily be able to go fetch from RAM at that physical address. But you as a person in a debugger, will not be able to just easily fetch from that physical address. So when you see what's in CR3 later, you might see an address and that's a physical address, but if you try to look at it with memory, you know, memory read DD and WinDebug or whatever, you're requesting memory for a virtual address, not a physical address because paging is undoubtedly on in the debugger that you're running. So that's just to say that uh, accessing and reading and seeing things manually at any given physical address, like if you wanna go look at the page map level four, that is non-trivial. WinDebug makes it easier for us to see the bits that we actually care about seeing. So that's again, part of the reason why I like to use Windows for this particular uh, class. So because this is again, these upper bits, so 51 to 12, then the bottom zero to 11 are assumed to be zero. So this page map level four needs to be hex 1000 or page aligned. You can see that there's a bunch of ignored bits here and two bits that do actually have names but those have to do with caching, which we mostly don't cover in this course. So we're going to ignore those too. Now you should be aware that when an operating system changes context between different processes in order to represent different processes with different virtual memory address spaces with different physical memory mapped at potentially even the same virtual memory address, the, the, the operating system is going to basically be rewriting CR3 each time it's swapping in and out different processes or kernel space context. And so essentially by changing this out, there will be you know potentially many page map level fours that point at a bunch of different page, uh, page directory pointer tables and so forth. So there's this nice picture in the manuals that I liked, but which I have to alter slightly before I can reuse because this page, this picture, first of all, it was just, you know, the typical 32 bit paging. So level two depth. And then second of all, it talks about tasks instead of processes. So task A, shared memory, task B. So if I go ahead and update this being lazy so that I only have to add two levels, we have this notion that CR3, when it's running in the context of process A, will point at one page map level four and for any given virtual address, it'll walk its way through these entries and find some particular physical frame. So when it's running process A, it's all this memory right here is process A's memory. When it changes to process B, it changes the CR3 and that can change which page map it actually points at. And consequently, it will now all of a sudden only see virtual memory in these particular ranges that it's defined in these particular tables. And if we wanted to go back to the notion that I was trying to show, you can imagine that process A has some page tables that ultimately have a page directory entry that points at a shared page table, and that page table is shared with process B. So process B has a page directory entry 
that points at that particular page table. And consequently, this RAM right here could actually appear in both of these two processes. It may not be at the same virtual memory address space, but the physical RAM could be accessible within the context of each of these processes. And we'll talk a little bit more about shared memory later and this notion of page tables as a mechanism for sharing memory.